In this lesson, we'll go through the integration formula that we'll need in high school maths. So the most basic formula we have for integration is the integration of x to the power n dx. In this case, n cannot be minus 1. This is an exception we'll go through later in this video. So if we integrate this, we'll get x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus the constant of integration c. Now, uh, the same integration can come in a different form with a constant in front of x to the power n. a over here is a constant value. So a number like 3, 4, 3.5, anything like that. This would be similar. We'll just have an a in front of it. So a x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and the constant. So for example, if we had integration of 5x to the power 3 with respect to x, uh, we'll get 5. This is a over here and n is 3 over here. So we'll have x to the power 3 plus 1. So x to the power 4 divided by 4 plus c. Now what would we do if the value of n was minus 1? So if it was x to the power minus 1 dx, the exception arises from the fact that if n was minus 1, this denominator would become 0. Anything by 0 has no answer. So we cannot have that. So we need a special case for this. So if n is minus 1, if we integrate this, we'll get the natural logarithm of x plus c. Now we have a modulus sign over here, this two straight line enclosing x. It just means that we need the value of x. We don't need the sign. So even if it was minus 3, so in case we have ln minus 3, we'll treat it as the same as ln 3. We'll not treat this as minus 3. We'll just place in 3 when we are calculating. We could have a similar constant in front of it as well. So this could have been ax to the power minus 1 dx. For such cases, we'll have a times ln modulus x plus c. Up next, uh, we have the exponential forms. So the integration of e to the power x. So when x is in the power form, in this case, x was down here and we had a different power. In exponential cases, x is the power itself. So the integration of e to the power x dx is simply e to the power x plus c. We could have a constant in front of a over here. So if we had the integration of e to the power ax, this would simply be e to the power ax divided by a. Now if we had a separate a base, so instead of e, if there were uh, other numbers as the base, so a to the power x dx, this would be this would be a to the power x divided by the natural logarithm of a. If it was in the form of a to the power bx, this would be a to the power bx divided by b times ln a. Now we can move to the trigonometric ones. The basic trigonometric one would be that of sin x and cos x. So if we integrate uh, sin x with respect to x, we'll get minus cos x plus c. And if we integrate cos x with respect to x, we'll get sin x plus c. It's easy to mistake in this uh, negative sign since the differentiation of sin x is plus cos x and the differentiation of cos x is minus sin x. Now if we had a constant in front of the x, so sin ax dx, this would basically be 1 by a times minus cos x plus c. So minus 1 by a cos x plus c and for the integration of cos ax dx 
will have 1 by a sin x plus c. Moving on, we have the integration of sec square x dx. Sec x is basically 1 by cos x. So if we square that, we get sec square x. If we integrate this, we'll get 10x plus c. And if there is a constant in front of x, we'll have sec square ax dx. This would be 1 by a 10x plus c. Oh, this would be x as well. This would be x. So the angle over here is unchanged. It's the same for differentiation and integration. The angle inside won't change. Now similarly for cos x square x. Cos x is 1 by sin x. So cos x square x is basically 1 by sin square x. If we integrate this, we'll get minus cot x plus c. Cot x is 1 by tan x or cos x by sin x. And if we had a constant over here, so cos x square ax dx, the integration would be 1 by a, so minus 1 by a, cot ax plus c. Now for the final two, they will also be in uh, a pair form. So over here, we have two integrations that are different, but it follows the same pattern. We have the same over here. The next two will also follow a similar pattern like them. So firstly, we have sec x, which is 1 by cos x, as we have mentioned earlier, multiplied with tan x times dx. If we integrate this, we'll get sec x plus c. And the other one is cos x times cot x dx. If we uh, integrate this, we'll get minus cos x plus c. And now if we had a constant in front of x, so cos x times tan x dx will have 1 by a sec ax plus c and for the integration of cosec ax times tan cot ax dx it would be minus 1 by a cot ax plus c so these are all the common formula you'll need for high school maths first two forms so this and this we could also have a x plus b to the power n dx since inside the bracket we have a linear term we can use the same formula over here as well so this over here will come out to be ax plus b to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 however in this case we have to divide it by the coefficient in front of x which is a and then we'll have a plus c and similarly in the case of the integration of ax plus b to the power minus 1 dx we'll get ln integral uh, modulus of ax plus b plus c and we'll have 1 by a in front of it 